totally this is the first rendition of this because now I'm going to actually start sharing my screen. Thank you so much. I'm just not sharing my screen the whole time. I, I'm just happy. That's like a new record. You all took four minutes of me just yelling at you all without sharing anything. So good. At least my voice is slightly entertaining. All right. Back to it. Can you see my screen now? Yes. All right. Perfect. So 27 TypeScript, this is what we're going to be working with today. We're going to be working with the studio for TypeScript. To do this, we need three technologies. You need Node, NPM, and TypeScript. To do Node and NPM, we are looking in section one. Over here, you're looking in this portion to install Node on your computer. You need Node. It comes with NPM. Once that's installed, you can install the third technology, which is TypeScript itself. We go down to 27.6 for compiling TypeScript, and we need to run this line right here, npm install dash g TypeScript. Dash g stands for global. Once that's installed, it is a global program, which means that it is all over your computer. So if you ever want to create a type, type, script, TypeScript program, it's able to be done without having to run this code again. So once those three commands are ran, Again, if you want to do in TypeScript, you got to install or you got to run that line. You can come over here. You need to run node dash dash version if you want to check to see if it's all installed. You should get a number back here. Then you should do npm dash dash version. You should get back another number. And then finally, tsc dash dash version. Let's spell it. And you should get back three different numbers. This means that all three technologies are installed and you were able to do the exercises and the studios. Any questions about that? Um, on my GitHub, it gave me the number um, of a TSC, but on my node, it's not, but it's fine, right? Are you talking about the numbers aren't matching? No, the version. Like when, you, when I typed TSC dash dash version on my Git bash, it gave me something. Um, it gave me a number. What does there. it say? It says um, on my Git bash when I typed TSC dash version, it said version 4.6.2. Okay, yep. So as long as you're getting back a number, it does not have to be these numbers, it just has to be a number. But on the node, it's not it, uh, on the node. Um, you're going in and a little out. Sorry, Hannah, for me, you were going a little bit in and out there. What was, uh, what was that last part? So that is fine, right? 4.6.2 is fine, and I can go ahead. Thank you. Absolutely. As long as you, yeah, absolutely. As long as you're getting back a number, that's all good. If you're getting back that this command was not found, that's when you have an issue. You need to make sure that uh, software is installed. <clears throat> Great question. All right. Anything else out there before we get started? All right. Then let's go ahead and do that. Hopping back over to the studio here. I can find the right screen. There we go. We're going to close out of this. On to 27.8 Studio for TypeScript. Let's practice type, TypeScript by turning on transcripts. That'd be nice. Give me one second. Twenty-seven point eight Studio TypeScript. Let's practice TypeScript by creating classes for rocket cargo calculations. Twenty-seven point eight point one starter code. If you have not already done so, follow the instructions given in the TypeScript exercises to fork the GitHub repository. Use the terminal to check. Blah blah blah. Can't even do that because I have not done that instruction. So we're going to come over here to twenty-seven point seven. We are going to find the TypeScript LC101 projects repository. Click on that. It's going to open up that tab. On the right hand side, I see fork. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Select the repository that I want to place it in, or excuse me, the account, the GitHub account I want to place it in. We'll create its own repository here in just a moment. There we go. I'm going to click code, copy that link for the HTTPS. Come over here, CD into the correct directory. I see it's the correct directory over here. It says LC. And now I need to clone it. To clone it, of course, I say git clone, paste that link, press enter, and there we go. It brings it onto my computer. Type in ls again to see all that. Dir if you're on a Windows machine. And now I'm going to cd, change directory, into TypeScript LC101 projects. There we go. We are in there. Good to go. So one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. I'm going to open up that project here in just a moment. Perfect to load, click open. Awesome, go into desktop, go into LC, go into TypeScript LC 101 projects, press open. And there we go. Awesome, I see exercises and studio. I'm assuming, because we're in studio right now, we're gonna be in the studio section. So I'm gonna take a look at the index.ts. Neat, lots of comments, nothing fun. And then the payload.ts, I see just the interface here. Awesome, awesome. All right. <coughs> Hopping back over to the studio, 
we have officially forked that repository. You should have done that previously with the exercises, so I went over that fairly quickly. We're gonna go on to use the terminal to check that you are in the master branch, then navigate to the studio folder. Let's go ahead and do that. How do we check to see what branch we're in? Anybody got that command for me? Branch, get branch. Very good, get branch. Doing this is gonna tell us exactly what branch we're in. Awesome, we are on that master because it shows in green with a star next to it. Perfect, or an asterisk. Awesome, awesome. So we are in the master branch. And it even tells us there, get branch around the masters. It looks like also solutions too. You're in the right stuff, awesome. All right, continue on. From the file tree in VS Code, open index.ts file. All right, we're gonna go and do that. Index.ts file is there and wide open. All right, 27.8.2 requirements. Create classes for astronaut, cargo, and rocket. Details below. Add classes, all classes should be defined in their own files. Let's go and do that now. Say new file, I'm gonna say astronaut, astro n-a-u-t dot t-s, new file. To do this a little bit slower, what you do is right click, press new file, and it is just like creating a file in JavaScript, except our extension changes. For this one, I'm gonna say cargo dot extension is now for a TypeScript. Uh, file is t-s, that's what t-s stands for there. I also forgot which one we're gonna do here. Uh, rocket, I need a rocket. Right click, new file, type in rocket.ts. T is in Tom, S in Sally. All right, use the new classes to run simulation in the index.ts file. In the starter code, you will notice that an interface named payload has been declared. This interface ensures that any class that implements it will have a mass kilogram property. Very absolutely correct. Don't forget, interfaces are contracts between you and your classes to make sure that structure stays consistent of whoever implements it. Awesome, any questions up to this point? Um, Kyle, suppose astronaut class is implementing the payload file. So if you want to access the mass kilogram property of the astronaut, do we say astronaut dot? I would say save that question. We'll take a look at that. We haven't implemented any of that stuff just yet. So we will okay, probably get to something right. like that. So okay, feel free you. to buzz me again and, and let me know to see anything specific. But yeah, um, I believe what you're talking about is correct, but we'll, we'll explore a little bit more Thank here. You. Sorry. Absolutely. You. No, no, you're all good. All right, on to 27.8.3 classes. Create the new class files, astronaut.ts, cargo.ts, and rocket.ts. We already did this. To do this in VS Code, uh, VS Code, click new file button and enter the file name. Another option is to run the command touch new file name in terminal. That's true, but I like a nice UI. It makes things a lot cleaner and faster sometimes. All right, define each class to astronaut, cargo, and rocket in separate files. Each class should be exported using the export. So we're gonna go and do that. I'm gonna copy this because it's free code. Why not take it? All right, and I don't have to spell astronaut again, so heck yeah. All right, we're gonna export that. Come into cargo, we're gonna export cargo instead. And then finally rock it out here too. I'm gonna save that, save that, and then save that using control save or command save, depending on your environment. And there we go, those three files have been initiated. Any questions on that? All right, we're gonna keep going here. As needed, the classes can be imported using the imports. All right, we haven't really seen anywhere that needs to be imported yet. I'm assuming possibly the index.ts, but we will import it when necessary. All right, on to 27.8.3.1, astronaut class. Define, defined in astronaut.ts implements the payload interface. All right. We're gonna start with this one. I mean, define an astronaut's TS. I'm actually a little confused by that one. I mean, we already defined it. We already used this code up here. We exported and everything. So I think we're well defined. So we're gonna go and implement the payload interface. So let's go and do that in the astronaut.ts file. I'm gonna to navigate to the astronaut.ts file and I need to implement payload class and need to spell implement right. Implements, excuse me, I always get that wrong. Insolent, plural, perfect. All right, button. There we go. But payload is another file. So what do we need to do with payload? What do we need to do to make this work? What's that word? Import. Very good. Import it. Absolutely right. We need to import payload. Not spell. From dot slash payload. 
Oh, it's in studio. Okay. So I need you to do dot slash studio if I want to do that slash payload because it is in the studio folder. So I apologize. If you place your astronaut cargo and rocket in the studio folder, it will still work. Don't worry about that. But I'm just grabbing that out of there. Payload is also not a default export, so I need to put brackets around it. There we go. Awesome. So the red underline under payload is now gone, but it looks like astronaut has a red under it. Incorrectly implements the interface payload. When we see this, this means we again are not abiding by the contract of the interface. We are not holding our end of the bargain of the cell phone contract. So we need to implement some stuff. Property mass kilograms is missing in type astronaut, but required in the type payload. So let's go ahead and implement that. Let me say mass kilograms and number. Perfect. It actually, if I just pressed enter, it auto filled that for me, which is very nice. I read it from the interface. So cool. Now that red is all gone. So we're good there. Let's hop back over and see what else we have to do. The properties of the astronaut class, mass kilograms, we just added that. We had to add it because it was part of the interface. The interface was not going to let us, not going to let us continue on coding until we did so. So, so we did that. So B, name should be a string. So we can implement the property name. So up here we're going to say name. Type today and say string. Awesome. All right. So those two properties have been implemented. Any questions up until this point? All right. Let's hop into the constructor then. Constructor says we need to take in a parameter. Mass kilograms should be a number. Parameter of name should be a string. And then set those values. Let's go and do that. To start creating a constructor, I use the word constructor. Absolutely right. And we need to take in a mass kilograms and a name. Go. But now that these, now that we're in TypeScript and these are parameters or a different kind of variable, if you will, we need to provide the actual type that these should be. So we provide that structure. Mass kilograms should be a number and then U M B E R, and then Spell that right, and the name should be a string. Awesome. And then it finally said, it just really gave us that one. We're going to use the keyword this. Of course, that correlates with the instance of this class, whatever's been created. That's what this is referring to. This dot mass kilograms to set that class variable up here to mass kilograms, whatever's passed into the parameter. There we go. So we're going to set the name also. This name. Mm. All right. Any questions up to this point? We just got another one done. We we're just rocking through this. All right. Cool. So we are all done with this section. Let's move on. We're just getting this all set up too. So this next one, I think, is going to be fairly just like the previous one. 27.8.3.2 cargo class defined in cargo or defined in cargo class TS. All right, implements the payload interface and then those properties. Properties is mass kilograms, and we'll talk about the next thing anyway. So let's go and just set up that cargo class. I'm going to copy this import up here because, again, very lazy over here. Very, very lazy. I'm not afraid to say it. Come down here, import our payload in there, and then we need to bring in that interface in order to abide by that structure. To use that, we or to do that, we say implements and then payload the interface we actually want to implement. So there we go. We are not abiding by the contract. So of course we need to in, uh, include that property. So that property is mass kilograms number. How do I know it's that one? If we go over to the payload file, again, it is right here. This is where it's telling me, this is what's telling me the structure inside the interface itself. So more to cargo. We are now implementing that mass kilograms. We're all good there. Awesome, awesome. Next, we need to include the parameter material, which should be a string. So this next one. So I'm going to say material up here, string. Awesome. All right. Those two parameters are done. And then all, or sorry, I'm up here on B. Number four, we need to create the constructor that, of course, sets the mass kilograms material. Or sorry, it's taking it as a parameter and then setting it using the keyword this. So I'm going to do that all in one swoop here. So say constructor, mass kilogram, kg there, number, and the material should be a string. Awesome. This dot mass kilograms equals mass kilograms. And then this dot material equals material. All right. This was just like astronaut, except instead we have a different parameter here called material. That was the only difference we really saw here. So any questions on this one? 
and let's move into the more fun one. All right, on to 27 point, or just to make sure we did do all of this in the constructor. Number four is all done. Awesome. 27.8.3.3, rocket class, defined in the rocket.ts file. Number one, already done. Check. Number two, properties. Name should be a string. Okay, let's go ahead and do these properties one by one. Let's go to the rocket class here. In here, it also does not, does not say it implements the payload class. Take note of that. The other two did, this one does not. So we're gonna go right into hopping into those properties. So name should be a string. Up here, we're gonna say name of string. The next one is total capacity kilograms, and because I can barely spell capacity, I'm just gonna copy that one. Paste that, type in number, awesome, awesome. Continuing on, cargo item should be an array of cargo objects. Oh, now we actually get some fun stuff going. Thank, everyone's like finally waking up, like, all right, Kyle, you're good into the good stuff. Heck yeah. Well, let's do this. Cargo items should be an array of cargo objects. So cargo items, I'm going to be a good instructor here. Paste that in. But what is my data type? Optic. Capital C cargo. No, array, 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 array. It's an array. It's very, yeah, so that's one thing. It's our container. But what's an array of again? Object and uh, what does it say? Cargo objects. Cargo objects. Cargo objects, not just objects. Objects is like saying, I want food to eat. And you just said, you're eating food. I want to know specifically what kind of food I want to dine on. So you get a little bit more spaghetti, like this like spaghetti. In this case, the object we're dealing with is cargo. Cargo, we are given a specific object to deal with. So we need to make an array of cargo objects. To do so, we use the cargo class and then open and close square brackets to denote that it is an array in TypeScript. I pressed enter here and it automatically imported my cargo up there if you saw that magically appear. But you should be importing cargo into this file as well. So we're using an array of cargo items or objects, excuse me. So any questions on that one? Would objects technically work or an array of objects? Yes, but remember TypeScript is all about having that certain true distinct structure. So if you can just throw any general objects in there, what's the point? Let's make it a little bit even more specific to just cargo items can be in that array. Because that's what we want, just an array of cargo items. That's what we're doing here. All right, should be initialized to an empty array. To do that, what we do is just say equal to empty array, just like that. Awesome. All right, astronaut should be an array of astronaut objects and should be initialized to an empty array. Let's do that as well. Astronaut and a U T S equals the astronaut A S T R. <laughs> there you go. Array equals the empty array. There we go. We have now created two arrays of these objects we created in the previous sections mm -hmm. of the studio. Neato. Any questions on this one? Anything at all? Anybody just like kind of irritated? It's like, I should have known that, but it didn't, but it's okay. I'm still happy. No? Everybody's like, got this. Got all right. I got a question for you. And then I don't up? know if it or not. So your import astronaut from dot slash astronaut and dot slash cargo. Mm -hmm. But if you go to your astronaut.ts, it's um, dot forward slash studio forward slash payload. So uh, mm -hmm. wouldn't it just be dot forward slash payload instead of studio? So in Rocket, according to Rocket, where is astronaut located? In which directory? In studio. If I close up studio here, where is astronaut oh, located? It's Gotcha, okay. It's located yep. in the TypeScript-LC101. Yes, in Visual Studio Code, and that is not your fault. Visual Studio Code, it doesn't really give a lot of definition to it, but yes, it is not in Studio. Astronaut is in our base directory. Gotcha. In Studio, okay. all we have is payload. So to answer I your see. question, yeah, yeah, absolutely. To anybody out there also, that's why we have .studio payloads because payload is truly in Studio, while Astronaut is in our base directory with Rocket. So that's why we don't have that extra little bit there. Great question. 
No, no, it's good to explore that. Awesome, awesome. Anything else out there? Okay, let's keep going then. So we put our properties in there. Let's go ahead and get to the constructor. Parameter name should be a string and the parameter total capacity should be a number. Set the values of this name and this total capacity. All right, this one is pretty straightforward. It's just like the last two sections. So I'm gonna do this fairly quickly. So we need to build a constructor. We use the word constructor, of course. We say name and then we say, oh gosh, I already forgot. Total capacity kilograms, total capacity kg. Awesome. Total capacity is number and then I'll put those in there too. And name is a string. So there we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, and just a reminder, make sure that you are staying on mute if you are not talking. I understand if you have a question, it is free game. If you want to stay there, I'm gonna go and do that, there we go. Just remember to stay on mute if you aren't talking, but feel free to unmute yourself if you do have that question. All right, constructor, awesome, awesome. Like I said, I'm gonna do this pretty quickly. We say this.name equals name, and then this.total capacity equals total capacity, awesome. All right, that is all done. Cool. Instructors all set. Let's hop into the fun stuff. That, like I said, that chat, like the section there was just like the previous section. So let's move on to four. Number four, methods, sum, mass. Oh, we got a lot of methods here. All right, let's do that. Methods, sum, mass, number returns the sum of all the items using each item's mass kilogram property. All right, let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and copy this for my own notes. And it says sum, mass, and takes in that stuff. All right. We say some mass coming over here. It says we need an items and I'm just taking this straight out of the books and it says items need to be a payload. I'm going to close that. And it also says colon number. One thing we didn't really go over in lecture and I do apologize. I wish we did. Um, down here, we have this colon number. This colon number is actually a return type. That's what it's saying. It's like what it is promising what's going to be returned back from the function. So mass, uh, sum mass, when it's done, is going to return a number. And it says pinky promise. It's going to return that number. All right. So I'm going to go put this comment there. So returns the sum of all the things. But real quick, we're getting some red here. First things first, it says under payload, cannot find item payload. That's because we're not importing it. So let's go and import it. So we say import payload from, and now this is where the uh, interesting part comes in. We say dot slash studio slash payload. There we go to import that properly. So that red is now gone. So why do we have red under number? A function whose declared type is neither void or nor any must return a value. What this is saying to kind of paraphrase that you said and you promised you're going to return a number, but you're not returning a number. So it's going to have a red under there until we actually return a number at the end. If we want it to go away, we can just say a return zero right now. And that number or that red line will go away. But we want to kind of be reminded that we have to return something. So let's just go ahead and leave it there. Sometimes errors are a good reminder to make, uh, to make us do something in the near future. So let's go now write this code for this function. Return to sum of all the items using the items mass kilogram property. All right, items, I believe, is what it, this is what it's referring to. So we're gonna say, now we can do this in a couple of different ways. We'll just go ahead and just do the old fashioned way with a nice for loop. We're gonna say, let my total mass, <laughs> mass equals zero. And we'll say for let i equal zero, i less than items dot length, I plus plus, there we go. And what I want to do is say my total mass plus equal to a continuously add to my total mass plus equals items. And remember items is an array. So how do I get an item out of an array? I use bracket notation, bracket notation. And then inside of there in this for loop, I use I. Awesome. After that, I need, I am now calling to a specific index inside of this cargo array. When I call to a specific index, I get back a specific thing. In this cargo array, it is a cargo object I get back. So once I have an object, what can I do to get its values out of there? I use dot notation. Use dot notation. You can also do bracket notation, but in this case, we're gonna be doing dot notation because then we know exactly what value we wanna get back. And that value, according to our instructions, is the mass kilogram property. So what I do is I use dot notation, dot mass kilograms, just like that. 
So I call to that property on that object. So that's being added into the mass kilograms variable. And then finally, of course, I return my total mass there. Just a reminder, I am not looking at the hand being raised. If you have a question, feel free to stop me and just ask me. Okay, Kyle, I do have one. Um, like this is what I mean, on line 20, um, I thought we had to, can you please explain that? I mean, shouldn't we say cargo dot, how do we get the item out of the cargo file? So we're not dealing with cargo here at all. I apologize. Uh, items is a payload array. So oh, we are just getting, so I apologize. We are, I apologize. It is not a cargo array. My mind is gone for the night. I apologize. It is a payload array. So when we call to this I index here, we're getting a payload, something of the payload interface type out of this array. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So awesome, okay, so we're getting that mass kilograms out of there and get that. Now, one thing I really wanna note is that, can you make an array of payload objects? The answer is no. You cannot directly create an instance of an interface, only classes. Remember, payload, or sorry, interfaces are just contracts. But if all if a class abides by that contract, they can be used under this term of the interface. And we'll, we'll exactly explore what I'm talking about here in just a moment. But just wanted to put that out there. So we're not going to be creating any arrays technically of payload objects. We're just going to be using this payload interface to pass things around that are abiding by that payload contract. So we're going to continue moving on here. So I'm going to save that. Any questions about this sum mass function? All right. So as always, I, I know it doesn't tell us to, but I want to show you that it does work. So what I'm going to do is create an array of cargo objects. So I'm going to say cargo, I'm going to import it there, cargo C1 equals new cargo. Oh, I'm in the wrong language here. I'm going to say let one cargo mass kilogram numbers is 100 and the material is why not silver or something like that that sounds like good material today and then we're gonna say let's see two equal new cargo anybody got a material out there for me what's your favorite material that i can spell copper copper i can spell that nice all right now i'm gonna create an array so i'm gonna say let my cargo array equal C1 and C2. And now let's go and put some types on there. I apologize, I should be doing that from the start. Cargo, and then this one is a cargo array. Now, watch this magic. What we're gonna do is we're gonna call it to rocket dot sum, oh, what am I doing? I need to create a new instance of the rocket. Let my rocket equal new rocket. Name is my rocket. Total capacity is, I'll just put in an arbitrary number of zero right there. And now we can actually call to its functions. Remember, we need to create the object and then we can call to its inner functions. Those inner functions that I'm talking about right now is specifically the sum mass one. Let's go and do that. My rocket dot sum mass Cool. And now I need to pass in items of payload array. Remember, cargo implements payload, which makes it at a basic level, a payload type. It uses the payload so it can be recognized as a payload type. So in my index.js, cargo is a payload type. Some mass wants an array of payloads. And cargo is that payload type. I can pass in my array of cargo objects. Now you're thinking to yourself, that does not make any sense. I understand, give it a second. We're talking about that inheritance stuff again and how things can assume the different types, the more general types, in order to be used in different functions. Now we're just again setting those TypeScript standards so we can stay within those bumpers and actually know it's being passed through. So my cargo array is what I'm gonna pass in here, my cargo array there. And what's gonna return is a const my sum, that, and then I'm gonna const a log. My sum is, all right, 
there we go. I wrote a small little code here just so we can go test out the sum, uh, the sum mass function. So let's go and do that. In order to compile our TypeScript, we need to run the first command, TSC, TypeScript compiler. So we do TSC and then um, our index.js, index.ts. There we go. I will compile our stuff. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, it's in studio. TSC um, dot slash studio slash index. There we go. Come back over here and we see that it is compiled. Not only that, all of the different files that index.ts depends on has also been compiled as well. So <laughs> that being said, we're going to hop over here and now we're going to run node dot slash dot slash studio slash index dot js we see that my sum is 300 our function is working correctly how do i know that because 100 plus 200 are mass kilograms that we've provided in these cargo objects and put into this array add up to 300 awesome so any questions about the things we just saw there Can you please show the uh, command line, like how you compiled it, Kyle? I'm a little bit new to this. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. The command, remember, is TSC and then the path from whatever directory you're in to that TS file you want to compile. We start at the base directory, go into studio, and then index.ts. Remember, we're at the base directory here. We go into studio and we go into index.ts, compile that into the JS file. That's what we did there. And also then note, Mm -hmm. Also, what we did was um, we put everything in the same directory. That is wrong. Is that nope. wrong? Nope. So then we Let's don't have to use the studio dot, right? We can just. Um, if you're in the studio directory, you don't have to use the studio. Okay, thank yep. you. Yep. You can change your directory to the studio directory if you'd like. Yep. I'm going to stay in the base directory just because it's typically what I do anyway. I always like to stay in the base directory, so I'll be using that dot slash studio, et cetera, just to be compiling for a bit. Yeah. All up to you. Awesome. Any other questions? Cool. So until we, until we do the node, the files are not compiled. I'm sorry? Until we do the node dot, um, the file name, the files are not compiled? Node runs your compiled file into JavaScript. TSC oh. does the compiling. Okay, all righty. Thank you. Sorry, I was... No, no, no. All good. I'm new to this. Okay, thank you. No, yeah, you're all good. All good. We're, we're all new to it, so don't even worry about it. No bad questions. Happy to clarify. Anything else on here? Hop back over to this code. Oh, not that one. I do not want to look at that stuff. That looks so much nicer. All right. Let's go and keep on going. We only did one of our functions so far. We just wanted to test things out. So hopping back over to our index, uh, rocket.ts, there we go. Let's see what we need to do next. Mass, your current mass kilograms number. Use this dot sum mass to return the combined mass of this dot astronauts and this dot cargo items. All right, let's go and do that. So you know what? No, that's what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna copy. So they actually gave us the function signatures right here in our lesson. So that is perfect. We're going to go and paste that right in there. Close curly brackets and away we go. Excuse me. In this one, it wants us to do this stuff. So let's go and get that. All right. So use this dot sum mass to return the combined mass of this dot restaurant, uh, this dot restaurants, this dot astronauts, and this dot cargo items. So what we can do is it says use this dot sum mass, sum mass, ask for a thing of items of the payload variety. Remember that astronauts and cargo both implement payload. So they are of the payload variety. So we can both just pass in those two arrays into the function. So what we can do is this dot sum mass dot this dot cargo items is the first one. And we say we need to add this dot sum mass of this dot astronauts. 
So we're adding these two together, and then it says it needs us to return the sum. So what we can do is just return that. Now to break that down, if we wanted to, we can say let cargo mass total equal let astronaut mass total equal let mass total equal cargo mass total plus astronaut mass total. You could have also done it this way too, if we wanted to fully break it down. Either way is fine. If you want to just do it in one line, do it in one line. If you want to break it down, break it down. Whatever's easiest for you. We're all learning here, so you don't need to go the full optimized route right away. Any questions on this one? Anything at all? I'm, all, I'm hearing crickets. I'm hearing crickets. I don't even see anybody's video on. <laughs> so I'm hoping that everyone out there is doing all right. Any questions on any of this? Oh, okay, I see Anne. Hi, Anne. Yes, thank you. Somebody's waving back to me. Thank you. Yeah, it's like I'm about to fall asleep. It's like if everyone else is sleeping, I'm gonna join. I need to take a nap too. It's been a long day. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully there are another questions. We got a few other functions, so let's keep going out here. Can add this one right here. We're gonna again copy the signature, and I'll get the what we need to do here in just a moment. Come on, you. Copy that. Bring it down here. Remember, we don't use that keyword function in. We don't use that uh, keyword function in our classes. So there can add, let's go and see what we actually need to do here. I haven't even read it yet. So this one returns true if this.currentMassKilograms plus item.MassKilograms is less than or equal to this. Oh my gosh, math. Cannot right now. Okay. Let's do, so first things first, this is a conditional. How do I know it's conditional? Well, we got this little operator right here. This is telling me uh, it's gonna, yeah, and also it tells me return true. So there's a lot of hints, a lot of strong hints that it's gonna be conditional. So let's get the two sides of conditional taken care of, and then we'll do the comparison. So first things first, it says this dot mass kilograms plus item mass kilograms. So let's do this one. So let's say let total mass equal that. So it gets the current mass of like all the astronauts on board and all the cargo together plus the actual mass of the rocket. So we got to say, oh, I'm sorry, not the mass of the rocket, mass of whatever is being passed into this parameter. So it's getting, okay, it's basically saying like, okay, this item, if I put it in there of its mass kilograms plus what's already in there, what is that total mass? Like, okay, I got that left-hand side. So if my total mass of that new item being added is less than or equal to this dot total capacity, then I can return true. So what does that mean? If it is less than or equal to the total capacity, meaning this is as much as the rocket can take, then you can add it, true. That's A-OK. -okay. But if it's over the total capacity, meaning it's past its limit, because I'm trying to take, I don't know, a train to space or something like that, and I'm over that limit, and Elon Musk can't send me up there, then I need to return back false. Meaning I cannot add that. Nope. So this is how we could write this. Now we can simplify this even further by instead of doing that, we can just return whatever that conditional says. Oops, if I actually. We can return this because if my total mass is like five pounds. My total capacity, or sorry, five kilograms, and my total capacity is 100 kilograms. Is five less than 10, or five less than 100? Yes. So I can still add that item. I'm just shorthanding it and putting it all within one line. Can we break it down even further, or simplify it even further? Yes, we can. We can take this line and replace it for total mass. There we go, we just placed it all within one line. So that's one way we could do that. 
Remember, if you want to break it down because it's easier, because we can take it into chunks, that's fine. I'm just showing you a more, uh, like, just all with it from one line to 100 lines. I'm okay with doing it e any way, but just kind of breaking it down and putting it back together. So any questions on this one for the can add function? Charles, could you please explain this again? I mean, uh, uh, you said this is a conditional, right? On the on the line thirty-five. So mm -hmm. returns true if this. So what is that symbol? Um, so, so if the right hand side is correct, if the right hand. So if the right hand side uh, of this uh, symbol is true, then. It will Are we talking about this symbol right here? Yes, please. So we know this symbol. Uh, another question would be, what is this symbol? What okay. is this called? What, what, what is this called? It's less than. Less than. So if we put an equals there, what does that make it become? Less than or equal to. Very good. Yeah. So that symbol is the less than or equal sign for our conditional. So if the left hand side is less than or equal to the right hand side, then it returns true. Okay. So for any example out there, if five less than equal to 10, that is true. 10 less than or equal to 10, that is true. 15 less than or equal to 10 is false. So, so it would be those conditionals there. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. You're all good. You're all good. Absolutely. No, we haven't talked talk that in depth much about conditionals, so it's all good, Anna. Not a problem at all. All right. Any other questions before we move on? All right. Let's keep going then. On to part D here. Add cargo. Taking in a cargo parameter and then a Boolean. Again, not even going to read this. Not even going to do this. It's getting too late to read stuff anyway. Let's go ahead and put it down here. Again, they gave us these signatures. They're super nice. So awesome. Put that signature in there. Uses the this dot can add to see if another item can be added. Awesome, awesome. All right. So uses this dot can add to see if another item can be added. Okay, I don't know exactly know if it can be added, what we need to do. So, oh, there it is. If true, add the cargo to this cargo items and returns true. If false, return false. All right, so if this dot can add, it's that we needed to check it. See if can add returns back true or false. Remember, it's can add returns back true or false. So we can plug that directly into the if statement if we wanted to. Can we save the boolean to a variable and then put that in there? Absolutely. But we can just shorthand that right there. But can add takes in an argument takes in an item here, a part payload. So who can tell me what we need to plug in here? Who's still awake who wants to talk to me? Item. Well, the parameter up here needs to be taken item, but what do we need to put in down here? Do we have anything called item that we can work with? It's the Boolean, right? Uh, cargo. So so this is the Boolean right here. And I'll go ahead and trim this out just so we can see it. So let it can add it equal can add. So this will be our conditional here. So our question right now is what, do, what is can add takes in a parameter item that's of type payload. What do we need to plug in down here to make it work? We have to take in the new payload. It is. So we do need to take in a payload, but I also heard it out there. We need to put in what we're taking in, that add cargo. We need to check to see if cargo can be added. Cargo, remember, implements payload, which makes it a type of part payload. Implements payload, so it is type of payload. So we can definitely place in cargo in there in the can add function. So this becomes a true or false because remember, can add returns a Boolean. Booleans, if statements love Booleans. So that's why we place it in here. So according to our instructions, that is not it. If true, 
add the cargo to the cargo items array. Let's go and do that. This dot cargo items. And how do I add something to an array again? What do we use? Oh, come on. How do I add something to an array? Dot push. Dot push. Thank you very much. Dot push. Remember, we push things into that array. Dot push. And then we add in that cargo. Awesome. All right. So if it's false, we add an else statement here. Oh, I'm sorry. If it's true, add the cargo and then return true. So down here, I'm going to say return true. Easy enough. All right. And then if false, returns false. Now that's easy enough. So if it's false, aka out here, down here in the else statement, we're going to just return false. Awesome. Now, if you're asking yourself, okay, I put true in here in this is, ooh, <laughs> I put true in here. Uh, I put true in here. Do I need to put the else statement? I absolutely do. I'm oh, sorry, I absolutely don't. I can put the else, I can get rid of the else statement if I really wanted to and just have return true or return false there. But for good housekeeping, I just keep the else statement. There we go. All right, any questions on this one? All right. Last but not least, add the astronaut. So I'm going to take in that last function here. There we go. Copy that. Close curly brackets. Perfect, perfect. Put that Boolean. All right, use the canon to see if this astronaut can be added. If true, add the astronaut to the astronaut's array and returns true, it returns false. This is very similar to the cargo one. In fact, it's extremely similar that I'm going to utilize a lot of the previous code by just copying it. And what we need to do is instead of cargo here, we use astronaut. And instead of cargo items, we place in astronauts. So it's basically cookie cutter for what we did in the cargo, but now we're doing it with the astronaut. We need to make sure all references are changed over to that. And that is because even the astronaut class implements the payload. Very good, absolutely right. Because it implements payload becomes that type of payload. Yep. Oh. That's why we can use it in the can add function. Absolutely right. All right, any final questions here? Because that is the final function. Because now it looks like we oh, lift our fingers off the keyboard. They gave us, thankfully, this simulation to run. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy all of this. And it says paste the code in index.ts. No, I want index.ts. Thank you. Paste that in there, save that. And what's going to happen is that we're going to get red under here. Now, this is my fault because I am such a lazy developer, I didn't even notice that we needed to place it in the studio folder. So I apologize if you're following along with me. But what I'm going to do, just to help us out, I'm going to go and delete these JS files too, just so we don't have them with us just right now. They'll be automatically regenerated, so it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to delete that. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to move all three of these folders by holding down shift and then clicking top to bottom and dragging it into studio. And then I'm going to click move. Then it's going to ask, do I want to update my imports for astronaut.ts? I'm going to say no, because I'm going to show what moving it, the dangers of moving things around does. So if we go to astronaut.ts, we see that we have red under here. It's because we are no longer in the base directory. We're in the studio directory. So now we can actually remove studio from here and just have dot slash payload. We can do this with cargo too. And I believe also Rocket is going to be complaining to us too. Let's double check. There it is. So there we go. I had to update all of these files here and let's save them too. So what I just did is I just moved those three files into my studio directory here and then updated those, excuse me, updated those paths to the imports.
So any questions about this? Because it's about that time. It's time to run the simulation. All right, let's go ahead and do it. So what I need to do to compile, I do TSC. And I say, you know what, we're gonna make this easier. I'm gonna change my directory into the studio directory. Press enter. So now I'm actually in studio of the TypeScript LC 101 projects. I'm doing CD. And then I'm gonna do TSC, that compiler, and then I'm gonna place or compile index.js or TS, index.ts. Wow, always 50 50 for it, and I always get it backwards. TSC index, it's gonna compile that index file with that new simulation code we just placed in it. And then if we go back, we see that everything was compiled, and index.js is now available. You know, I just want to look at that, turn a blind eye to that stuff. To run it, I need what command to run my JS files? What is it again? Node. Node, no. very good. N node, N-O-D-E, very good. And then index.js, we can only run JS files. So we press enter here. And let's take a look. It says May's on board, Sally's on board, Charles is on board, satellites loaded, all this stuff. Well, let's go ahead and compare that to what we should see. It looks like on board, on board, on board, loaded, 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 not loaded. Let's see, Tesla Roadster. Tesla Roadster is not loaded. And then let's see our final kilograms. It should be 56, 56, 78. 56, 56, 78. Awesome. So it looks like our output is correct. So fantastic. It looks like our simulation is working correctly. Awesome. So there you go. That was compiling and running. Any questions on what we just saw there for the compiling and running, running the simulation, or anything along those lines, or anything before? We'll have to tackle who the code looks like. Anything. All right. Well, that was it. That was TypeScript. So let's go back over to our studio, though, and see what else we have to do here. So we did 27.8.5. We are all checked out of that. So we got our expected console output. Awesome, awesome. So the last thing we have is the 27.8.6, submitting your work. Once you have your project working, use the terminal to commit and push your changes to your, Git, or to your forked GitHub repository. So I can go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll say git status. See that we have a lot of stuff here. So what I'm going to do is git add period. So git status there. You see that it's all green now. That's what we like to see. Git commit dash message finished studio. Hopefully. So we commit it, and then what's the last thing we need to do? Push. Push. Push it. Push. Push, push it. So say git push pushes up there, and now it should be in our GitHub. Come over to our GitHub, and we see that it is in there. Awesome, awesome. All right, so our studio is all there. Fantastic. To double check, log in, navigate your copy of the URL, and then you gotta place in Canvas, of course, to tell your TA that it's all done. All right, that is it. No bonus missions too. Oh, that's not fun. But that is it for the studio. Any final questions about anything that we saw today and TypeScript in general? The lack of questions is seriously scaring me, but I hope you all are kind of seeing TypeScript and its use and how close it really is to JavaScript. We're just adding a little bit of sugar coating to it to make it do something very substantial. I appreciate the walkthrough, but you have to understand that none of us were in this yet. So the questions won't come until we're watching the, the recording and working of our course. way through it. Of course, yes, when I'm not available, always. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no, I completely get it. As always, feel free to schedule that time with me or Slack me or ask your TAs about it. But it, I'm sorry that you guys had trouble getting that uh, TypeScript on your machine. 27.6 to get that downloaded. Again, uh, I'll make sure I put that in my notes call that out a little bit more specifically, but hopefully this helped out a little bit. So other than that, everyone, that's all I got. Everybody good? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording then.
we are all done here.